We're here. What's this, up? This What's is up, it. Everybody? I can't believe it, Jerry. Your dream is finally Ooh. coming true. Your very own Ghostbusters podcast, buddy. It's finally coming to fruition. Look, the marketing you guys are it. not going to be prepared mm -hmm. for the amount of cringe that you are about to endure. <laughs> oh, my God. It's going to be so much. Look, we've got, listen, we've got a, 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 a containment unit full of just absolutely bonkers batshit content coming your way about Ghostbusters and everything to do with Ghostbusters oh, that yeah. you've all been clamoring for for years. You've all we've heard it. We've heard it. Uh, I walk into the room. I hear people. I heard him say it. I heard him say it. they want the <laughs> Ghostbusters stuff. They want it. I said no. they want the, the people want the Ghostbusters stuff. I'm elated because of one thing alone. We have a whole month. Everything scheduled out already for this and so yes, i'm gonna give do. you a tease and for those that might not be excited i'm sorry but we're stoked because i've always wanted to talk about ghostbusters yeah. ad nauseum always have fun have fun with us like just come and like enjoy uh yeah. basking in the presence and stuff because i think you, know, you might find a little enjoyment out of it and you you will hear some dune squeezed in not today but throughout our future episodes of this plugged in oh, somewhere we're gonna squeeze that dune right out <laughs> so i'll read the uh the dates and everything uh february 27th we have a pod dropping ghostbusters one we're gonna talk about the first movie february 29th ghostbusters two it's gonna be a live show we talk about ghostbusters two mm -hmm. february i'm sorry march 5th a music discussion on ghostbusters march 7th yes, expanded and lost media on ghostbusters which is our bread and butter mm. uh then we've got ghostbusters 2016 on march 12th which is going to be the all-female-led version of the ghostbusters which I've yes. never seen i'm gonna watch it with jerry we may even do a patreon thing with that on um on pi day 314 ghostbusters game it's a live show we're gonna talk about and watch footage from the ghostbusters game maybe even some cinematics mm -hmm. On 319, Ghostbusters Afterlife on the podcast review. And then, of course, all leading up to the ultimate episode, 321, Frozen Empire review, directly after leaving the movie theater. And then maybe some stuff after that as well. So that's right. I can't that's wait. Right. Yes. Eight things. Pull, pull up the graphic again real quick for this yeah. because we have our logo. We have our logo there made by the venerable Scotty J. Rowe. I love him to death. Look at this. The Bombad Cast Ecto Countdown. Oh. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> it's going to be great. It's starting now. It's yep. starting now. So get ready to be absolutely just plastered to a wall with green ectoplasm. Okay? Yeah. Yes. I can't Here. wait. It's it's like it's like cum. It's like, but, um, <laughs> it's Slimer's slime. Not really. No, not I'm, really. I'm super excited. So slime slime. we're doing this because oh, there has not him. been, oh, let's see it. There has not been a better oh, opportunity. Look. look at him. Look, look. Oh, he's not doing his thing. So good. Oh, in my, anyway, <laughs> there has not been a better time to cover this because during app, we were, we were kind I wasn't weary on afterlife. I just didn't know what to expect with afterlife. And then he's still going, uh, I think it's going to be great game. to cover it here and talk about this and really get into the nitty-gritty of Ghostbusters because it means a lot to you and it means a lot to me. And Jerry has some right. takes. Slimer's just going crazy in the background, by the I'm, way. I'm not touching him anymore. Uh, he, yeah. uh, He'll fall asleep in a sec. He, there you go. He's asleep. He's asleep. Him, Good. Okay. I was worried. Yeah. Uh, I, I, the, yeah. So the, today's sleep, agenda, Shanda. we're going to watch two trailers. We're going to watch... The Frozen Empire uh, most recent trailer, which came out like, what was it, like for four or five days ago? Like super Upon recent. recording, it was Monday of this this week. So this week, um, yeah. by the time you listen to this, it's about a, a week or so ago. Yes. Um, but yeah, no, uh, very soon. So we got our uh, first full trailer. Mm -hmm. And then also, unbeknownst to everyone, they randomly drop. Well, they dropped the international trailer, and international trailers are hit or miss. Like sometimes it'll be like, oh, we added a couple extra scenes. This is a completely different trailer that they dropped. So you yep. basically got two trailers on the same day, which was absolutely just, it's insane. I never thought I'd ever see this day uh, come to fruition. It's a good way to kick this off because 
for me, I'm very excited. I love both movies growing up as a kid. I have them both on Blu-ray. I have them on digital. I love them. I love them. They're, They're good comfort movies for me that Katie loves them too. And the reason I'm saying all that is because I am not what you are for that. I am not. I have a, I have a love for it, but I, I did not right. grow up during the hype of all this. And, you know, Jerry wanted to address some things at the top of the show about why are they making Ghostbusters a franchise all of a sudden? And I, right. We'll talk about that as we progress through these coming weeks of nothing but Ghostbusters coverage. But if you want to say something right now, I just think it's an important well, thing to address. Just to, the, the reason why we're kind of talking about this, and you know, I've seen a few people out there be like, I mean, why are they trying to make this into something? It was too comedies or something that in the night in the 80s that came out they were fine and things like that and uh, you what you don't remember child <laughs> i was born in 1987 yeah. into a world where there were ghostbusters there was already one ghostbusters movie there was one coming very soon after i was born um there were ghostbusters breakfast cereal ghostbusters mm -hmm. clothes ghostbusters toys yeah. ghostbusters juice ghostbusters toys ghostbusters toys <laughs> ghostbusters toys it was everywhere you looked yeah i had no choice but to be a ghostbusters fan it was everywhere it was well, everywhere. even now Saturday you can buy the we're watching the show you can buy the reissue it's, it's, figures it's, yeah yeah you can buy the reissue figures there's uh, there's always been one of the t-shirts that always exists in a target is a ghostbusters t-shirt yep. of some kind there's been more over the recent years mm -hmm. like especially 2016 kind of reawakened a little bit of that mm -hmm. uh in people you know um but there i mean ghostbusters has kind of always been around it's kind of been it's taken a back seat and everything it's but it's had it's had two cartoons uh two cartoon series made about it yeah. It is had, honestly one of those cartoons. The first cartoon ended up having a spinoff that started for like one season. Yeah. Um, that didn't last. But uh, I'm I'm telling you, it's had uh, we've had games, uh, toys. Uh, there was the like you said, the video game we're going to be talking about, which is essentially what we thought was the last thing we were going to get was Same. the third. It was basically the third movie written by. Harold and uh, Dan, mm -hmm. uh, uh, maybe Ivan. I'm sure. I think it's written by Harold and Dan for sure, yeah. and uh, starred all the original cast, set in 1991. All voices. Mm -hmm. all voices, and then there was a IDW comic series that went on for a while, for years after that. That um, we've got Dark Horse Comics coming again. Um, so this has been in the zeitgeist and everything like that, and it doesn't hit for everybody, and. Why are they making them superheroes? Because the Ghostbuster, those who have done the bombad bod, as we've called it, is also the Ghostbuster bod. Of and course. we need schlubby superheroes too. We need superheroes that look like us. And are the Ghostbuster superheroes? No, but also they kind of are. Yeah. They're people who save the world in their this movies. This trailer right? makes me feel like I'm watching a superhero movie. So I would say right. they are. And you know, one thing too, I think it's very important to address. And I say that often when we do a podcast, but you watch this and you got to think there is a huge history of this. Most of these actors and writers yeah. all wrote for the original cast of SNL on night or they were, they, or they were themselves were the, the cast. original cast yeah. of SNL since 1975. So you've got 50 years of a legacy coming up. I mean, like you've got these yes. actors, these, yeah. these people in 2025 had been working together for 50 years. And that's just it's mind insane. blowing. And like, yeah. I don't know. To me, that says something about the importance of creation and sticking to what you do. And we know um, Dan Aykroyd's a huge paranormal person, always has been. So, like, you, you know. Well, I mean, not even his whole family, yes. even. Like, his legacy is basically there. The Aykroyds are basically the Van Helsings of the yes. real world. Yes. You know? So, I just, I, I'm so excited to talk about this with you. And I think it's important that we watch this trailer and. We, we're just going to watch it through. For our audio listeners, you're going to be listening to us uh, watch it. Uh, we're not going to talk over it, more than likely. We will go back and scrub through it and talk about a few things, yeah. the things we're excited for. Scotty won't talk over it. I might talk over it because yes. I'm bad at talking over things. 
So. <laughs> Even me. So let's uh, yeah. let's get this trailer pulled up and uh, let's have some hype. I just love the idea of oh, them all having their own uniforms. By the way, that's my favorite little thing. So let's check it's so this nice. out. Here we go. We're gonna need all the help we can get. Let's get to work. Call dark oh, yeah. and horny at twelve. Our little pre pre preview preview. I've been waiting 40 years for this. They called themselves Ghostbusters. Incredible. According to these hacks, they saved the world. No eyewitnesses. And who is found to carry the torch? Descendants of Egon Spengler. You have a miner hanging out the side of a moving vehicle, firing a laser gun indiscriminately. It has a proton pack. It's completely safe. I wouldn't say completely safe. The Ghostbusters are finished. Well, overruled. Sustained. Thank you. <laughs> Every time. Did the weird guy who plays uh, strange old things? Correct on both counts. Buddy, you just hit the jackpot. This cast, what man. Is it? Better question is, what's inside of it? The parables tell of an unimaginable evil commanding an army of ghosts. The power to kill by fear itself. Like, literally scared to death? We might be looking at a second ice age. Incredible. We're gonna need all the help we can get. Let's get to work. Can I be of any help? That move. Melnitz in uniform. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is there something strange? If there's something weird, who are people gonna call? Ghostbusters, what do you want? <laughs> We're the Ghostbusters. Can I tell you something else? What? Buster makes me feel good. good. Makes me feel good. <laughs> Heads up. It's all dark and horny at 12 o'clock. Oh my god. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> I just love that it's so practical. Like the ghosts in the library. There's, oh. There's a lot of practical effects in it and it, it which harkens back again to the original and everything like that you know and it, i mean just the library ghost being the first ghost that they encounter yes. we don't uh, i don't know if they'll use the name they came up with in the in the third game or anything yeah. like that her she, they gave her a name in that game and everything like a whole backstory oh okay. um eleanor tweedy okay. everything like that but um interesting to have the library ghost back and have ray be clearly dealing with her yeah things like that um there's there's so much where you know like so to start at the beginning i guess yeah uh you have the voiceover by uh one mr dickless himself <laughs> walter peck which is just i mean these shots of the, of the ecto i love the new paint job on the ecto it's not too far off from the original i just love the cut but to have like the them and the ride oh, from yeah. Yeah, you have the Spinglers uh cutting into uh the shot of Ray and Winston uh kind of having that which honestly that's a great that's a great scene in that original movie too. It is. I got to be careful cuz I'm just going to talk about everything. Cuz they talk about revelations um, in that scene if I'm not mistaken, right? He talks about do you believe in God and everything. Um, Talking it's the whole uh that's why people they're like, "Oh, Ghostbusters is a comedy." Yeah, but I mean it's got like these real sincere and also kind of creepy moments and stuff, yeah. you know. So what if what if the reason why we're so uh busy is the dead have been rising from the grave yeah and stuff is like such a and then they get creeped out and turn on the radio <laughs> exactly so, that's what we do it, it's real it's real and i i love this world but yeah you've got so we've got walter peck who was the epa agent um oh. talking with them and is either the mayor or some leader uh high up position because he's again he's jerry in, 
There is, is some kind of nice office. Is it the same office from the first one? Because it almost looks like it could I, be. It looks like it could be. So it is definitely it. It's this is supposed to take you back to the first two movies where they are going to are brought to the mayor. Basically, yes. Uh, both times they're like basically escorted by cops to the mayor. Yeah, <laughs> which is. Um, I, I love that that's like a trope with Ghostbusters is you your main characters always get arrested of uh, because Ghostbusters fight against the grain, my man. That's what I got to say. Always fighting the power. But uh, I don't know that it is the same office, but it is an it is a very mayoral office. The framing of these shots, though, are just so good. And who's the young lady that it's plays really good. that plays uh, what's her name again? Um Phoebe, yeah, who plays Phoebe? Because she's she's such oh, it's, a um, McKenna Grace. McKenna Grace literally delivers mm. the same attitude and like I guess you could say posture as Spingler. I mean, it's 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 like, yeah. Well, she's like, yeah, I love that she's got like that, yeah, the monotone you're talking about yes. and everything like that. The yeah. hair, the she's vibe, the, the stance. Look at that. Yeah, Look at that stance. Oh, it's so yeah, it's she. She's Egon. Yeah, she, she is Egon, Egon in these new ones. Yep. Essentially, at least in spirit. Um, I also love you've got the uh, the interaction with. So we've never seen really Gary Gruberson, who I'm assuming is. I don't know if they're married or just dating in this one because oh, this you're is right. supposed you're to right. be. A, this is a few years after Afterlife, where they have their kind of first meeting. Yeah. You haven't yeah, like, we haven't seen him talking with Trevor or mm -hmm. hanging. He really had more to do with Phoebe and um uh, and and the mom, right? Yeah, yeah. And so uh Callie, excuse me, Callie Spengler. Question Jerry. And so do they always have yeah. elbow pads or is that a new thing for this movie? Oh yeah. No elbow pads is a big thing. That's what yeah, yeah. Um no, is but I love the interaction between him and like where he's like Paul Rudd being Paul Rudd. He's like, oh, overruled. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> then, uh, sustained from the back is so <laughs> fucking funny to me yeah. that they don't give a shit. It's no. like sustained. And that's like the Ghostbusters kind of attitude, right? Yep. Like anytime they're in like those like situations, like they're always like, you know, like, oh, you're going to believe us or dickless over here. Exactly. <laughs> it's like you don't, you don't take. You don't take what I do seriously, so I'm not gonna take what you do seriously. Because that's right. That's, I, we're trying to save the world. Here. Yes, and you are, and you are in the way of it. And you know what's funny too? Watching this and knowing this is coming, I did not realize how much our legacy characters would be involved with this story because they really weren't involved. Yeah. I mean, Dan Aykroyd was involved with the phone call and Afterlife and the the ending scene where he shows up, and of course, right. that's about it. This, however, I mean, this is like, this is like Force Awakens level. Oh, we're all, they're all back. You know what I mean? And I'm right. hopefully so, done better than Jurassic World or Jurassic Dominion. That's my only, that's my only caveat is like, it has to be I better mean, than that. I feel like, so this is essentially a, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a, uh, what do you call it? Oh man, I forget words at the right time. It's only when we're recording a podcast. It's it's a it's a huge cast. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think of the right word. Anyway, um, let me see if I've got these images here. Well, even Andy Potts coming time. back, dude. Like that was not that was not expected for me. Back. He was an afterlife, mm -hmm. but not. Oh, here we know. go. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So there was something like this. Mm -hmm. old cast new cast that happened in the ghostbusters or extreme ghostbusters cartoon okay. where the real ghostbusters came and there was a two-parter it's called um back in the saddle yeah and they team up and fight together by the end of it and yeah. um here is a shot from that episode oh wow of all of them together yeah okay and then here is a shot from the international trailer oh wait a minute go back and forth so isn't it crazy how because you've got the ecto behind them in both shots oh this is actually really cool god look at all of them you've got how many one two three go back one two three four five six seven eight nine podcasts does not have the gear on but safe to assume i still think part has, of the crew. yeah oh absolutely any pods um, having the, there's, having there's having, apparently Oh, oh, go Janine. ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Janine having the outfit on is very satisfying. Because have we ever seen Janine it, in a Ghostbusters uh, outfit? I don't think so. Right uh, in the 
cartoons oh, in the cartoons okay uh, okay but um which that's that's why it's a huge thing people are like oh my god it's just like it's because they're saying they've been very inspired by the cartoons by the real ghostbusters and things just the the bat shit off the wall scenarios and putting these characters kind of in that um there is by the way apparently there's an extra character in those shots at the end we don't know who it is yet it's like a blurry person diving out of the way um when uh the ghost shows up at the end garaka is the uh -huh. the main antagonist there um so you think it's sigourney weaver we do you know. think do you think it could be uh i've got to look at the screenshots everyone that i've listened to is talking about how it looks like it's someone in like old like timey armor so there might be like even oh. more crazy weirdness going on um but no so back we were talking about having the old cast and everything and not wanting it to be you know kind of like cheap and throw away and i just i feel like what they're the way they're doing this where they've got it's different teams yeah you got the raise a cult side of things where yeah. he's buying these uh cursed artifacts from people mm -hmm. you've got the firehouse right where like the the main team is and then you've got and we're gonna learn this in these trailers you've got this uh the r d the the paranormal research center yeah where they're also working i think that's what's going to make it work yeah is that kind of and that's we're the all research spread center. out doing different things. it's it's like stranger things which i know people don't are like you know oh everyone's trying to copy stranger things but the way stranger things has the different stories for the different characters is how that makes it work yeah right? of course and it makes it so much more effective that way and yeah, I, I love that the object of interest in this film obviously is holding some sort of deity, which has been uh, is yeah. that different compared to everything else? I think it's different. And look, it, it's trying to open it's different compared to the to the movies. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Oh, I didn't even see. I haven't even noticed the uh, it's like opening yet. or closing. The, or he's maybe the numbers opening. He, maybe he's trying to keep it closed. I don't know. But grabbing it is what obviously something like that. Yeah, causes a sweet little hand to freeze. And that's a new character, right? That's yeah, one. Or, added. Yes. So this is James Acaster, a mm -hmm. uh, British comedian. And uh, the character he plays is Lars Pinfield. Okay. And Lars Pinfield is supposed to be, according to the uh, articles and everything, it's basically the Egon type. Oh, He's like an, okay. another brilliant mic. Because Egon was the one who kind of made all of the gadgets. Yeah back in the day like they all kind of worked on them together but egon was like the genesis for a lot of the the tech yeah this is the guy the new guy who's developing the tech which is why he's research and development guy see i love when they do this kind of faux like historical evidence you know stuff like it looks like a yeah. Sumer a sumerian god ancient or something. carvings yeah i think yeah it's, I, yeah I, I love that stuff. I love that because it, it it to me it sells it as a kid I would go look this up after you know what I mean I'd be like oh my god oh yeah was that well real? he even says like he even uses the term parables the parables um, tell of an unimaginable evil yeah um and this is that's a great phrasing of that this is an interesting deity because uh, from what we know and he's putting on his horns right here so what what are we thinking but, this he, he is grabs really? them from there yeah so there's it's some kind of shrine or something um what do you think is going on I'm, I'm, well i think that again somehow he is released is yeah. what we're led to believe and he finds they find their horns and yeah. uh reattach them for something maybe the horns is what gives it its power or something yeah. and someone removed them so he couldn't return or something yeah um but yeah no I, I just have to say real quick too. I'm so excited for this cast. You know, when you got a lot of people like again complaining about this stuff being uh, too serious, when yeah. this is a a movie with Paul Rudd, Patton Oswalt, and Kumail Nan Kumail Nanjiani, yeah, who are all so hilarious in their own right. Um, okay, this little scene here as well looks like it takes place. Uh, it looks like looks like it's back in like the early 1900s yeah that's what i'm assuming because it's candles that have recently gone out you can see and then also you've got mm. people in the background looks like they're dressed up you got a fellow with a either a cane or a weird mustache and this this fireman outfit is obviously old that's an old school the fireman's hat. Out. Yeah. yeah yeah it's like 
old school, old school. Yeah. And then you got a modern day shot where you can see like people's with their tennis shoes, the Nikes right there on the right. So like, mm. obviously this is a really convincing trailer to blend two different, you know, two different ideas that we could get some sort of, you know, origin story for what's his name again, Jerry or, or rock. Garaka, 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 and like Garaka is our bad guy here. We uh, with his horns straightening out. <laughs> yeah, it's so <laughs> weird, it's creepy as hell, so creepy. And I love that it's a winter storm coming through New York in the middle of summer. Mm -hmm. Love that. I love, I love plots that mess with the, you know, this because this to me now, and is this one of those universal themes that I love? It's like a Nightmare Before Christmas. You've now got a movie that's coming yeah. out in March that gives creepy vibes but also is turning the city into like a wintry area. So like that's right. You've got multiple Which, things you can celebrate here. You know what I mean? Right. Which I mean, you know, uh, this was originally slated to release in December. Yes. Of 2023 yes. as well. So, um, you know, it, it's, it, and also it's, I love, it's a perversion of nature, right? Uh -huh. You know, you've got like the snow when you're not supposed to have it and everything like yeah. that. Um, okay, this is exciting for any Ghostbusters fan because that means they've got a new vehicle. It's some kind of oh, van. Oh, yeah, look at that. Thing. You're right. With the logo on the back. They open it up and it's got like just a shit ton of proton packs in it. Another thing exciting because they, they've always, it's always ever just been Ecto. It's been yeah. Ecto 1. I love the idea of it snowing right here. You know what I mean? And I wonder where, yeah. you know, I wonder where uh, we get. Um, I, I, I just wonder where Veekman's at. You know what I mean? Like, I wonder where, like, why he isn't, you know, fully involved and looks like he's just showing up in this shot. And he might not be. You never know. But I love that it's right. snowing in the background and you can see that um, you've got – I'm sorry. I'm, I'm falling apart. You've got Janine right there in the outfit. I mean, I don't know. It's just – it's cool. I, I love this. Right. And I wonder, does, well, does this like, mean yeah, we're going to get – do you think we're gonna get Rick Moranis back at any in any way? So they've said they've said that there are still surprises and stuff okay. in store. It would be the it's it's a long shot, I think. Yeah, I am holding out hope because he has done that one like Mint Mobile commercial. Oh <laughs> yeah, Ryan Riddle. Um, but I love that you've got you've got Janine in the uniform, but you've also got if you could go back a little bit there. And I know like for our audio listeners, uh, Janine's got uh, a new piece of tech, which is essentially like an arm cannon yeah. uh, or so. It's 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 essentially probably like the neutrino wand is what they call uh, the part that shoots, uh, but like a wrist blaster version yeah. of that. I don't know. It's something interesting I that she's that. got. That's just a new I love. So what what you probably had complaints of before and what I wanted them to do with this movie is to expand the world to do different things than we've done. Because the first two movies are kind of really very cookie cutter. They're very yeah. like the same. Um, but then you, you know, Afterlife did some interesting things, but it was still kind of like the old guard, like the old kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Here we've got a chance to have brand new technology, brand new stuff coming through. And um, yeah, it's just i'm i'm so excited to see of course what they come up with because you've got all these right there we've got I, what i'm guessing is a proton pack with the back removed so you can see the cyclotron in the back oh that's cool because you've always so. heard it we've always heard it go we've always right. heard it power up but to see it actually in motion is going to be and you probably couldn't do that in the 80s so but waiting to do it now is incredible speaking of 80s right amazing as as spielberg oh, yeah. said one of the greatest ju jump cut i'm sorry jump scares in all of movie history was ghostbusters and this is ilm through and through i wonder if ilm worked on this i would love to know if they did oh definitely because ilm was the ilm worked on the first okay right? you know that would make so, sense Just that was one of the movies that they worked on yeah oh. and i mean that's definitely practical definitely a yep. practical puppet kind of in there but with CG enhancements and everything, and it just this, it looks so good. You're gonna love me for this. This, is, this is the library is, ghost for the for is, audio listeners yeah, as well. This is the shot that gave me chills. Like the whole trailer was great, but seeing her again, I was like, oh my god, this is such a return to form now. Especially yeah. this. You know what I mean? Like, this is so ideal. I love this character. But yeah, seeing her show up is incredible. I love seeing uh seeing her go after ray yeah seeing her go after ray again is amazing and like you know 
I just they're they're in the library, obviously. I, I just want to know. That's what I love about these movies. How do they end up where they're ending up? You know what I mean? Right. Like, why are they back? Well, there? some like someone was saying too is uh, that I was listening to today. Uh, a lot of the movies, the characters are at the right place at the right time uh -huh. most of the time here, and so it's it's interesting the way they end up where they are. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I know you got him at the library here. I wonder if this so uh, Patton Oswalt's character, Doctor Hubert Wartsky. Mm -hmm. um, I love Ghostbusters names. Me they're, too. They're so like real world, but they're just also like kind of off the wall and crazy. Exactly. Um, but you've got let's see. So Pat Patton Oswalt's character. It looks like he might work at the library. We don't know, but he works with Ray. Is what it seems like. Uh, okay. um, but you've got that shot later of him. And Ray by the lion, which is the lions outside oh, dude, of that life. That gave me chills because that's not the intro to the first movie. Isn't the, the lion first movie? It, it's the first shot. It settles yep. on that lion yep. out of the front, which so I, again, I caught at the beginning. The first uh, trailer they had that in. Oh, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Janine, what do you want? Ghostbusters, what do you, what do you want? want? Which again, just a classic callback. Oh, man. Uh, this is so they, they put this on the teaser for the trailer the day before. Uh -huh. And I mean, I was laughing my ass off um, just, <laughs> you know, listening to Paul Rudd go Busta makes me feel good because everyone's kind of been making fun of that re recently with like PlayStation put the Busta makes me feel good on a yes. ad or something. And people were like, what? Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is busting, pretty incredible. You know, it's as pretty a, great as a big Ghostbusters fan, like the first one, because I love the first one to mm. see this come to life is pretty incredible. It's just. It, and it's I wonder what, what what's causing that to come to life because you got to think and you know as much as we have this new protagonist which I'm sorry antagonist which mm. you're excited for there's something to say the library is haunted makes sense but the statues there have never been allusions to these statues being haunted right right so I just well and so you you get little breadcrumbs here and there and what what my speculation is is that because of the presence of garaka's object even if he's not out i mean look at like ghostbusters 2 you got vigo working oh, on true. things inside of the painting yeah so maybe it's it like you always what what i love about the ghostbusters films is it's a ramp up to this big battle it's this things are starting to get extra weird yeah they've already been weird but they're starting to get extra weird so maybe you're gonna have like oh things are going a little crazy a little crazier than usual here so um, that's another thing too. When it comes to this new villain, you know, I, how are they going to stop this villain if they cannot capture it? You know, with the with the proton beams. Like, like I love that it. What was her name again, Jerry? From the first one, I forget. That's from lucky. Life. Lucky. That's lucky. The uh, love interest of Finn Wolfhard's character. Trailer. Yes. So, um, so. What's cool about them saying that they are very excited about working or, or, or they got a lot of inspiration from the real Ghostbusters mm -hmm. is they had an, a different way to bust a ghost every episode, basically. Oh, they, part of the I end of the episode that. is them having to MacGyver their way. And sometimes they just catch the ghost. Yeah. But they always have to figure out the right way to do it. Yeah. It's always like kind of a MacGyver. And sometimes it's a macgyver thing of like, we got to build this new thing that helps us. Yeah. Because it won't be caught by the regular thing. You know, we got to catch it in this thing. We got to do this. If we yeah. do this, it'll banish it. Uh, one episode, they fight the uh, the boogeyman and he's not an actual ghost. So they have to like close the portal to his world forever. Oh, and okay. And so it's... it. It's it's a it, it depends on what uh, Garaka's weakness is. That's what. So it's that's also a good thing about Ghostbusters is they're kind of mysteries yeah. as well. We're trying to figure out how are we going to defeat this this evil thing. Evil, of course. Um, yeah. Which you've got, you know, like the first Ghostbusters, they don't even catch Gozer, right? Like they no. they close Banish. her door uh -huh. and destroy that gate. Banish her, yeah. Uh, and then we end up having her coming back in afterlife, afterlife and everything. Yeah. So it is. It's interesting. I'm excited to, to, to see because How? it's it's yeah. new territory. It's new territory. We haven't touched this yet. It's not anything to do with any of the past villains. It's no. a brand new threat. Um, and it, oh, it looks so good. And you can see, actually, I'm just noticing there, no horns. No horns. You're right. Good point. So the power is not in the horns, evidently. So uh, 
Well, and I mean, I, I feel like it, that's where he gets his. Maybe that's how he commands. He's able to command the ghosts. So, yeah. Honestly, this is so real Ghostbusters. It's insane. Um, and again, I'm not saying you have to watch that show to get this, but I, what I'm saying is it's going to be a, it's going to be a crazy premise. It's going to be these different like pieces that fit together into, Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Kind of a thing. You know, well, I also like that, that with bringing these classic characters back, they'll be able to tell some lore that could be from both the TV show and the game. And you mentioned that earlier right. in, in our discussion before we started recording, like, they could very well mention that other member of the Ghostbusters that just was there for that, you know, for the video game. Right, for the game. Yeah, for right. the game. Which, yeah, like in, the, in the comics that they, uh, the game is... Because uh, doesn't the state... Yeah, they talk about how they don't remember that guy's name. Doesn't, doesn't um, the stay puffed Marshmallow make a reappearance in the game? Am I crazy? Or, yes. There's a, there's a big... Yes, entity. Yeah, that's what I thought. But, like, you know, now you got the mini puffs. But I love this because, you know, we've got we've got Vinkman with the glasses on, you know, I, I just think it's a, yeah. a cool shot. There needs to be a reason yeah. why though. There's gotta be, I think. Yeah. Unless it's just for humor, but I don't think it is. I mean, it's Vinkman and yeah. honestly, Bill, and he was Vinkman in the last one. It's fine. Like, but, but I mean, he feels like he's actually in it here. He's not yeah. phoning it in. No, in this, not that he was in the last one, but this feels I heard I heard someone say this is the most Bill Murray I've seen Bill Murray in a long time. Yes, probably since uh, Zombie in this trailer. Like when he goes, "Oh, Melnitz in uniform." That's pitch yeah. perfect. When he says, "Hey, heads up, tall, dark, and horny." Yeah, twelve o'clock. That's a hundred percent Vinkman. The sunglasses <sighs> is just it, it's that's how we, that's what he does. You know, he shows up and he makes wise cracks and still kicks ass. You know? Do you think? Uh, do you think Goraka is going to speak a audible language, kind of like Gozer, or no? I, I believe so. I think okay. we're going to get some shit talk from from Garaka. Look and at that I can't face. Wait. You, you gotta, can see it here. You got to have like so we've had Gozer coming and being like, oh, uh, you know, talking about choose the form, all that kind of stuff. You got the the, the I love the talks that the villains always had because they're always these super powered godlike entities yeah that are just like you pitiful mortal thing uh, like that i can't wait to hear what this thing sounds me like. too and jerry i just noticed <laughs> what you were talking about earlier the the armored person on the far left of the frame running out of the yeah shot. right there there's like That's an armored weird. person like kind of diving out of the way it's like reflective uh, i heard of someone was also saying that podcast is holding a hammer or something in here oh maybe which yeah. is weird like a big hammer this so is just interesting. I love. Is this. there a time? Is there a time travel element to this movie um, that we don't know or something? You know. Do you think this? Or maybe it's maybe it's maybe it's not time travel. Maybe it's ghosts from a certain era or something. Yeah, you know? that would be awesome too. I would love that. The last people that were frozen, maybe. Like uh, one thing I want to want to ask you too. Do you think this fish creature is is Goraka's calling sign? Maybe like. Like I'm gonna send this thing first to scout out the area because there's a there's been a ton of this creature in the promotional yeah. material a ton like so I think what they're doing with that is this kind of like a uh, like a Slimer and uh, uh, what do you call him a uh, uh, Muncher yeah from the last one is so spoilers what you do know from the uh, article that came out in empire recently that this is the opening sequence with the with the first time you see uh, the ghostbusters in the movie okay. they're chasing this thing called the sewer dragon okay so i think this is just kind of a uh, showing you it, it now it could connect back yeah. towards the end but i think this is just going to be like the big opening sequence to go like hey they're here they're back in, in new, new york, york they're busting yeah. ghosts yeah okay new york so that um, is very cool. Very cool. We get a better shot in the international trailer, which you're going to watch in just a second. Oh, Slimer yes. being back thrills me. Slimer. So Slimer looks Effect. incredible. Slimer looks more like he did in uh, 1984. Yes. And he's, I don't know if you've noticed this. We, uh, Slimer has had uh, several different looks from even Ghostbusters one to Ghostbusters two. The, the look changed. They tried to yeah. make him more like the cartoon. Yeah, Ghostbusters too, and uh, then in Answer the Call, it's a completely different. Like I think they tried to go for a more old school look, but he was completely CG. Uh, this you can tell there's a little bit more 
of at least when it's coming out of the pile, there's more of a, a practical nature to him. Yeah, definitely. He also, I love when he's flying at Trevor there, he's got Cheeto dust on his, uh, oh, does on he? his face. If you notice. Watch oh it. my God. That's incredible. Also based on, on yeah. Jim Belushi, if I'm not mistaken, right? Wasn't that the, the yeah. Engine? Look, he yeah. looks just like Jim Belushi. Look at him. No. That's awful. <laughs> I, um, I love that. That I up. love that. That was like, cause I, I imagine that Jim would think that was funny Yeah, because Jim and Dan were really good friends. Right. Yeah. So like, it's almost like if me and you, like one of us died, we made like a movie with like a really ugly puppet just yes. like, as an homage Hold or him. something <laughs> to the other one. <laughs> to Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, shitty. <laughs> so let's watch this international trailer now. Hold on. Yes, yeah, so let's get into it. We're listen. We're forty minutes in here and everything, so we'll we'll try to. I'll try to keep it to a minimum. But like, there's really cool stuff in this one um, about Sony Pictures the, uh, India. Uh, pretty sure. If you go to Ghostbusters News now, they're not a friend of the show, but I I know on Twitter they have uh, versions of them that are like very well. Okay, there you go. Here we go. Let's do it. This one, Jerry, yeah. prep prep the audience for this one. So for our audio listeners or our video listeners, uh, our video viewers, uh, why why is this important? You know what I mean? The international trailer. So what's cool about these two trailers is you've got the first one that's kind of like, hey, the Ghostbusters are back, you know, and it's almost like a uh, a trailer that shows the the action, the comedy yeah. kind of things. This is kind of more of a story driven trailer yeah. um right here this gives a little more of the plot i feel like and it honestly um it, it adds a little more weight to the things that are happening so I, I think this is the better trailer uh for a expanded audience but the other one pulled on my yeah. heartstrings being a big ghostbusters fan so if i were to right. sell it i would sell it with the more emotional one whereas this one you're kind of like oh Oh, we're really doing this. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. So we can. Yeah, no, I agree. Up. I agree. And I've heard, actually, I've heard a lot of people. A lot of people have been saying that recently over the past yeah. couple of days. Talked about this. Anyway, let's Here let's go. Uh, let's take a look at this. This baby. We've all had experiences and encounters with the unknown and the unexplainable. Here we pay top dollar for your possessed possessions. Now, this is very, very interesting. Have it for 40. Oh, I've never seen anything like this at all. 60. That's the funniest thing, man. All over New York City, ghost attacks are on the rise. Ghostbusters, what do you want? And we are the only ones Hold on your head. equipped to fight back. Welcome to the new Paranormal Research Center. You just let ghosts hang out in here? We've spent 40 years trapping them. Now we can study them. He's cute. Yeah. Ever since you brought in this all, strange things have been occurred. You think it's commanding of a spirit. Is there something trying to get out? First time we're hearing oh, James Academy. You could be looking at a full bore army of ghosts with the power to kill by fear itself. Like literally scared to death? That's my sir. So what is the plan? <laughs> we're the Ghostbusters. We stay and fight for this place. Suit up. Shoot anything that looks terrifying. That orb is prophesizing to bring about the end of humankind. The second ice age. Chills, man. Literally. You know, let me get the same stinger here. Yeah. So it's April 19th around the world, which is very interesting. That's in India. Yeah. Too. Yeah. I mean, it's simultaneous release for most places, but yeah, India, I've heard uh, uh, Spain is that uh, as well, I believe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so... I like that trailer more. I think it's more dramatic. I think it actually makes it. It's got humor. Don't get me wrong, but it definitely has right. a little bit more of a serious feel. Yeah, but Scott, why are they trying to make superheroes out of a comedy? Oh my god. <laughs> anyway, so you've got you've got look, look right off the bat the creepy tricycle uh, going on its own. So what this says to me is there's going to be a classic like montage of things going shitty. Yes. Uh, like in the old movies, which I love. In the first two movies, you have the the big montages of uh -huh. oh, ghosts are taking over. Yeah, here we go. It's crazy, and I always love that. So I, I feel like we're gonna get a little more of that. Yeah, this too is interesting. You you talked about this. We Jerry and I recorded something the other night, and we talked about a few things. And this in particular is one of the ones we talked about. Uh, how do you this, feel about this? This so is what those audio listeners. Um, it's a shot of Phoebe 
sitting at like it looks like one of those uh, Central Park uh, chess tables, mm -hmm. right? And uh, she's playing chess against. If you so Afterlife, Egon plays Egon's spirit plays chess with her the whole movie. So it looks like, and they've said Egon's not in this movie. Yeah, they might just mean the physical manifestation of his spirit. I wouldn't mind a scene where she's kind of like having a little like, honestly, I would ball my eyes out if she just gets to have weekly little powwows with her dead grandfather. Can um, you imagine? I'm not going to be well. No, not at all. <laughs> so maybe she goes for like a little advice or something and he yeah. and she gets a little advice, you know, almost like force ghost like, you know? Yeah. I mean, honestly, it doesn't seem it, it's hard to tell because you feel like how much of this movie is going to be frozen. Ver, you know stuff is it going to be just towards the end or uh it, it, it's i don't know it's so exciting it's so exciting just, to see this so raise occult books was that something established was that in ghostbusters, that's in ghostbusters 2? 2 that's what i thought okay ghostbusters but I 2 love, yeah read it there's a live music live music raise occult books Friday. everyone's been talking about that like what well, kind of live music is, is raised it's, it's, it's gotta be weird experimental synthesizer or music. like blues brothers yes blues or brothers did, you know? yes uh, i hope we get an if answer. they have oh if they have like if they have an homage to the blues brothers in this that would be so fantastic That'd too. Be incredible yeah i i love kumail's obviously sense of humor in this he always delivers right but we saw we kumail saw is the one I'm most excited, the the act like the com he was the comedic actor I was most excited to get in this. Oh, look what he's! I mean, using. I love Patton as well. I did yeah. not realize. Oh yeah, he's got he's the, the yeah. Get the PKE meter, and uh, when he tries oh. to use it, things go wrong. Um, and, uh, I also love the line of people going into Ray's. Like he's talking about, we listen, we're we'll buy your possessed possessions. Yeah. Um, the line of people looks like. I mean, just weirdo characters from the background of a real Ghostbusters yeah, look. episode. Look at them. Just look, look at those. Look at look at those New York weirdos. <laughs> they look so good. I love them. Someone said it looks like Doc Brown's in the background. Yes, that's <laughs> what I was going to say. It looks just like uh, it looks just like uh, uh, Christopher, Christopher Lloyd. Lloyd right there. Yeah, yeah. Was, I've never seen anything like this. Is great delivery where he's like, mm -hmm. oh, I have it for forty. And he like starts saying like, "Oh, I've never seen this." Sixty. <laughs> so it does freeze the top of his freezes the tops of his um his storefront. Uh, I guess mm -hmm. you could say the glass that everything's stored behind. Let's see, Sony right. gotta love Sony. I Made mean, Morbius. Um, Hundred years of Columbia. Now I love this. I love that. Uh, oops, sorry. I think it was freezing up. I love that we get um Winston as the actual like spokesperson it's incredible yeah oh well, you got oh, to look, go podcast. from the guy who was just trying to get a job right podcast definitely has to, a uniform on in that shot yeah. jerry i didn't notice that yeah oh man my my boy podcast is absolutely going to be busting some ghosts man wow and she's got an orange one on this is yeah, interesting she's got her got her coat that that uh ghostbusters parka that they are going to be so popular now Oh, I hope Ghostbusters so. Fan. Oh man, this is Ghostbusters. So cool. What do you want? So, anytime cool. there's a shot of uh, Ecto One leaving the the firehouse, is a core memory for me. Like, I it brings up core memories for me. Is it really? Like, my I earliest like memories are just watching uh, the Ecto One pull out of the, the firehouse oh, in the, so the cool. cartoon mainly. Yeah, but still, but just like I mean, those they always give me chills. It's like we're going out on a call. You know? uh, yeah, it, it's it's I just love how much this movie is going to pay homage to what came before, but also establishing things that are new. Like, what is this little weird area they're going to in well, here? It's, oh, this is so that be is the lab. That is the lab. That's the uh, he calls it the paranormal research center. The new welcome to the new paranormal research center. And if you look at it, it's old defunct technology. I was going to say, that's a Mac. People that's an like, old what? Mac. But, but what I love about that is with paranormal investigation, mo most of the time you get better results with analog technology. Yes. Yes. And so I love that that is, and your mileage may vary. I'm not talking about if it's real or not. I'm just saying it's very, they do their research. They know what they're doing. And it feels more Ghostbusters to have it be a little like, Oh, we got old school stuff. We got the cast off stuff nobody wants. Yeah, of got course. Got mini puff back. 
So mm-hmm. in, in here, they're saying you let ghosts just walk or run around in here, and they've got mini puffs, apparently. Look at one of them. Like... You get ones, you see the ones coming in the slime. <laughs> so there. good. Jars of slime as well, which is a great Ghostbusters thing. Just like <laughs> sitting around. I wonder, do you think that um, lead slime, Jerry, is, this, is from the uh, Ghostbusters 2? Look, there's a, there's it might that... be, yeah, might be some mood slime. Yeah, I, I would love if we get a mood. Well, we so uh, from one of the shots from the Vanity or not Vanity Fair, um, the Empire article, we know yeah. that they are going to be testing a slime blower and stuff. Oh, so really? I assume it's filled with psychoreactive slime. I because love that's the good stuff that like unpossesses somebody. Yes, yes. You know? I love that that's they have unpossessed the person. He owes them. <laughs> the book in the corner is fly, a flying saucer book. It says flying saucers. Oh know. yeah. See, and I love, that's what I love about these movies is it's, it's full of, it's full of Dan Aykroyd's uh, love of the paranormal. Of and course. the paranormal is more than just ghosts. It's everything. And I love that's that goes back to what they asked Winston. Do you believe in UFOs, the Loch Ness monster, the theory of Atlantis? Okay, so is he a producer in this? I don't know. Is Dan Aykroyd a producer for this movie? Is Dan a producer? Um, I'm not sure. I would assume. Yeah. Probably. Look at this. They're so. I know. Uh, Gil Gil Keenan and uh, okay. So this shot I wanted to talk about. Yeah. This for everyone was like, oh, it's a giant containment unit, but it looks like it's it's several containment units. Yeah, I think it's several. And even within those, you've got it looks like there's like four different places to put a trap. That yeah, he's putting it in one spot. I could see it. Um, yeah. So very cool. Uh, very interesting. This feels that again. That's the real Ghostbusters had a fucking huge uh, thing. This is so we got cute. this new little cute character. Uh, Pukey is this is that really name. Dave? No yeah. way. Look They've at released the name on it's on a Funko Pop. Of this thing got revealed to be Pukey, Pukey. which he pukes at the glass. They always say it's always dumb, stupid names. Slimer, Muncher, Pukey. Yeah, Jerry, <laughs> I think you're on to the idea of them all being in separate places. I like that idea. And that the chaos. All I think breaks. it is. I think they, you got the different teams and then they've got to figure out different. Maybe they, they're figuring out different parts of the mystery as it goes, you know? Yeah, at this point, the door gets blown off by uh, Goraka. Well, I love also you've got the whatever's inside that thing. It's commanding of the ghosts is what yeah. uh, James Acaster's character, Lars, says. Um, and then you've got, was it Gary, Paul Rudd asking, uh, what's trying to get out a lot of things is what Phoebe <laughs> says. And so I, I think this is going to be, which is why people are like, why are there so many of them? It's going to be kind of crazy. There's only f- supposed to be four guys. I think it's going to be a full on, there is an army that we have to catch. We have to yeah. catch this army of ghosts. And I do like that this is clearly a different time. Uh, so it's, this is not from the opening scene because look at the storm behind them. You can just tell the, yeah. the atmosphere also looks different. There's more people in the streets. But I love seeing them all suit up. And there's some scenes in this trailer that are exactly like the other trailer. Like these next couple are all from the other trailer. But there's a lot right, of right. different the, footage in this. Like that that dialogue right here. It's a ton. Yeah. It's a ton. This, I think, will be the the ultimate scene. Like I don't think this is going to happen. This is, yeah, this is like right before. This is like uh, real shit third act. Down. Yeah, I, I, right I'm here. convinced. Because no one else should be worried about this incident until it actually happens. Much like Ghostbusters right. 1. No one knows that there's actually ghosts except for the commercials that are on TV and the advertisements. Right. You know, but they, they're not really big threats until the, the third act. And I, I don't think they want to endanger so many people and have that be the whole plot. Like everyone being cold in this shot, you know. Right. And then, of course, yeah, it's dying. like it's not going to be a complete uh, day after tomorrow type mm-hmm. thing, but it is going to be like, again, like it's that slow ramp up, which is a classic Ghostbusters trope. Yes. And this scene's interesting, too, because she's almost her arms are frozen and she's touching the pole. Maybe the brass pole doesn't yeah. freeze. I don't know. Maybe the fire, the fire and look, get away from her is interesting. This is them in the lab. That is such a powerful, like, get away from her. I Uh, wonder, like, what's going on. She's in, they're in the uh, research center there. Yeah. And Lucky's face. Again, we've noticed that you don't, he doesn't have his, they, uh, excuse me, Soraka, whoever they are, 
it doesn't have the horns at that point. Yeah, this is a crazy shot. This is the shot that actually got me kind of scared that we may see a death. But like you said, death isn't always. We told this during our Godzilla review. Death doesn't always yeah. mean it has like to be a good drama. Death does not have to happen. And I hope this movie doesn't rely on that. And if it's done, it's done well. But I don't think they're going to kill anyone off because Harold's already dead. Like, you know, what would be the point of killing any of these older characters off? You can have the stakes and everything. And honestly, in a Ghostbusters, if they're, again, I keep going back to real Ghostbusters, but you have all this terrible shit happen to all these people. And then when they bust the ghost, it reverses everything. Yeah. Right? Which is a very simple fix, but to me, it works better with Ghostbusters with ghosts because it's like we put away this evil magic and so now everything is righted yeah you know kind of a thing so you could have something like that obviously she's in the end too they're yes. facing off yes. against him so, so someone gets her out of there yeah and that's the thing when we analyze shows like this we're not trying to spoil the movie for you we're simply speculating on the fact that there are scenes in this that genuinely excite us like this i never thought yeah. i'd see nine nine ghostbusters all ready to fight you know and they they don't even have the yeah. well um lucky does but no one else has the red perka on so maybe yeah. this is well and i don't know one so one thing that they've mentioned i forget if it was uh dan mentioning it in the article or if he just mentioned it in a in a interview or something but he's talking about how um ray has actually been sidelined by winston because of his health in yes. this movie yeah. So he spends most of the movie. Uh, apparently, most of the movie is Ray has to kind of just be a consultant now. And okay. you've got this final battle where it's all hands on deck. Ray has to come back in here. Yeah. Uh, and it's just, I, it's, it's going to be an interesting arc. I think we're going to get a lot of drama in this as, you know, I, I hope we get a little more insight into uh, who Egon's who Callie's mother was yes. who Egon had yes. the child with what that situation was like, because it almost seems like maybe it was something that happened a, like years, even before the first ghostbusters film, mm -hmm. just given the timeline and the age of Carrie Coon um, or right around that time before they started the ghostbusters. Yeah. And maybe like the mom didn't want to have anything to do with him. Yeah, you and know, that, that, that would maybe make sense. it's something like that. There could be, or, you know, it, we. I would love to find out what is going on with that. It doesn't have to be that, but I would just love to get more information on their family background. Of course. You know, this, there's perf this is the perfect time to uh, explore that. But I also think it's cool that whenever you get a story like this, you do have, unlike Star Wars, you do have some leeway. You have some room. You can wiggle. You know what I mean? Star Wars is pretty yeah. tight well, and like, concise. This is some. There's room. no tight canon with this. They can no. like even say they can say the game isn't canon anymore, and people probably wouldn't really care. Yeah. They're just ghost. What? I, what I'm and I. I've always been a Ghostbusters fan. I've never been involved in the fandom fandom part of it until more recently. I've kind of been well, dipping good. my toes in. Yeah. And honestly, um, they're just happy to get another Ghostbusters movie. Of course. <laughs> I, that's how like I Star, feel. As Star Wars fans, well, and as Star Wars fans, we're so um, just uh, we're spoiled. We're, we're excited, spoiled but we're also we nick, we're nick we're nitpicky, man. We just we don't. Right. There's a little bit of a uh, not that Ghostbusters fans aren't either. Sure, everyone, they don't have everyone their is. Inside, yeah, everyone but. can be, but there's something about this mm -hmm. that has a more inviting, uh, warmer tone to it than the hyper analytical that, that it can be star Wars. You know, this is a great right gateway into like, this could be someone's first Ghostbusters movie without having to see anything that came previous. And it still needs to stay on right. its own. It's still, it still needs to. And most of these movies do, you know, I I've, yeah. I've seen two a handful of times and I love to, but I don't have to watch one to watch two. I don't, I really don't. There's nothing right. about it that is required you know, it's not like Star Wars where there's an arc of characters and a changing of characters, which, of course, these characters do go through change, but it's not quite as drastic right. in some franchise. No, the most the mo most drastic was the last one where you had yeah. a full on member of the team die. But that's die. because the the person real person who was yeah. the real person had passed on who was yeah. part of this cast. And that was the best way they felt like to move forward. It was perfect. Um, so. It's well, and yeah, it, like this is. I do I love to get 
neck deep in like the weirdness and the lore of this world. Absolutely. This is like my second favorite next to star Wars. Yeah. But, um, while you watch that trailer, it's, it's going to have the emotion for me because I grew up with it. Like you said, what we talked at the beginning, I grew up in that era where it was mm-hmm. huge. It of was course. like huge for kids. My age. Yeah. And, um, I was like kind of the second gen ghost, but there was like a couple generations of ghostbusters fans <laughs> like yeah. in the eighties and nineties. Yeah. Um, and, they uh they are something special to me and to people like like you too they these yeah. movies mean something to people but they're fun they're fun that's the big thing yeah. and that's the, i so i showed uh my kiddo i showed ella this trailer i was a little worried i was like mm, should i and i just was like you know what i'm going to show it to her mm-hmm. and she thought it was great she wasn't scared at all she was like that's that's great because it's just it, it's fun mm-hmm. it's something and also what i love about ghostbusters is the fact that it is something it's inviting for kids it's like that dipping your toe into horror yes it's, it's kind of oh. giving an outlet for kids it's giving an outlet for kids to go i don't have to be afraid of what's under my bed mm-hmm. and stuff. here's these guys who will come and will catch the exactly. mean thing that's trying to scare you and stuff and like i want to be like that i want to be the guy who comes and like the person who comes and catches the thing yeah and it makes it not scary because like they're gonna catch it and put it away they're gonna I mean, imagine it away if you do you have your proton pack don't you have one yeah i have right yeah yeah right back here imagine if you if your sweet baby was having a little nightmare and you just got to walk in and be like hold on i got you sweet let me <laughs> stick some of the bed real quick she would love that. Honestly, she's well, yesterday. Uh, yesterday, uh, before I even showed her the trailer, she wanted to play uh, Ghostbusters meets Pokemon. Yes, so she always wants to be the the, the franchise meets <laughs> her Pokemon. That's so her that's, that's what we're on right now. We're that's doing we're the, doing everyone's the, least favorite Alien versus Predator movies uh, in my home every <laughs> every day. Well. Man, Jerry, but it's, I love her. I love. Her I so love. Much. I love how passionate you are about this series, and I love that you're able to articulate it so well. And you know, this is this is your comfort movies. This is what brings you joy. You. When Star Wars is not the thing that you need to see right now, it's always going to be Ghostbusters, and that makes yeah. me very happy. Oh yeah, because some people don't have that. Some people only have one franchise that they can do and they can digest. But this is a whole. This is a very unique one. If I'm going to be honest, like you know, this and look, you can see the marketing. It this yeah. is legit. This is going to be a full like eight eight different bits of information of shows dealing with this, and we cannot wait. Right, I cannot and wait to talk about it. It's batshit insane as yep. well, which is like what again is why people go, "Why is this a thing?" Yeah, <laughs> but you unless you go and truly just kind of give yourself into the, I just want to have fun. I want to laugh. I want to have fun. Mm-hmm. Maybe get spooked a couple of times. Um, which may not even happen, honestly. Yeah, it may not, not happen in these new movies. They're not they're not as scary uh as the first one. Yeah. But no, uh just just go to the theater. I won't say turn your brain off, just get ready to have a good time. You know, I agree. That's what we want, guys. That's all that's we all we want. That's all we want. Um, everyone listening, uh, thank you so much for coming and listening to this. Just know that there's a lot more of this coverage thank you. as the months go on. And if you like it, by all means, share it with your people. Uh, maybe you can even review us. Uh, we're going to be changing some stuff on the podcast. We're going to be called the uh, the uh, Bomb Bad Busters. We're gonna there's going to be some movement. We're gonna do we're gonna get some stuff made, mocked up, and um, yeah, yeah. The, this this these Slimer lateral was, moves and stuff. Yeah, yeah these, you guys get it. Slimer was a fun little design that I got to kind of work on uh, today at work during doing some downtime. So the Ecto mm-hmm. Countdown is real. And this is kind of the beginning of it. And uh, if you like it, great. If you don't like it, well, just just know that come uh, end of March, you might be happy to get some content. We're still going to cover Bad Batch. We're still going to cover. We're still covering Bad Batch. We're going to cover everything where we really are, and we're going to have different stuff. And maybe you know, maybe this schedule doesn't work out. But as of right now, this is kind of where we want to go. And hopefully, you're excited. I know I'm excited too. And you've got an expert. You've got the one. He's look at him. Yeah. He's right there. Oh, a guy. You. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. An I'm ecto the guy. Junkie. Well, I, oh man. That changes. Uh, change I, it I tonight. Such an ecto junkie. Go on Twitter. Well, I, got I, got I still got my I still got my ecto junkie. I still got my ecto junkie uh board, but I'm gonna have yes. to I'm gonna change it back. Yeah. Good. I'm gonna change it back. There you go. 
but anyway, listen, we love y'all. Uh, share we this with your friends. If you're if you're not a Star Wars fan, if you're a Ghostbuster fan, coming and finding this, um, share it with your Ghostbuster friends. Just use the hashtag. Like we talk about pop culture and all kinds of stuff. Just try use the hashtag Bombad makes me feel good. That's gonna be the hashtag. Yes, hashtag Bomb, Bombad, Bombad makes me makes feel, feel good. good. <laughs> yeah, that's what we say when we come. Yes. <laughs> um, Bob, it makes you feel good. Oh, Bob, it makes you feel good. <laughs> anyway, oh, man, makes me feel good. Anyway, we're uh, gonna stop now because you're turning it off at this point. Yeah, stay tuned for what's to come. Get excited, get hyped. We're excited for this. It's gonna be cool. It's gonna be like when we did Indiana Jones of the summer, and when we did the the Rise of Skywalker hype leading up to that movie. And I don't know. This is this is something I've always wanted to do, and I'm so happy that Jerry is gonna be the 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 guiding light through this because there's a lot of things <laughs> I'm not aware of, and I'm gonna need a lot of help. So it's gonna be awesome. We're gonna, yeah, we're but, uh, we're, gonna, we're about to be educated kids. Here we yes. go. Yes, I'm Scotty Jero. You can follow me on Twitter. You can follow me on uh, all my social medias. I have a link tree. Uh, click that. There should be all in the description below this, or even in the podcast feed. And uh, Jerry, you mind plugging your stuff real quick? Yeah, no. Follow me at the Cannon Junkie on pretty much everything. Uh, look for me on Ionized Bastards. That's in I'm our trying. second season right now, and. Uh, yeah, no, that kids like and subscribe, uh, review us on iTunes and all that kind of stuff, you know. And what else? Oh, Apple Apple Podcasts and Spotify. oh, you guys should also um, you should make sure to charge uh, to heat up your proton colliders and stay bombed, Buster. <laughs>